Whew, you wipe the sweat from your brow. You've rented a country cabin out in the woods, desperately needing a break from the city. It's summer, way too hot. You set your suitcases on the living room floor. Go to turn on the light and nothing. The power's off. Great. You head down to the basement to turn the breaker on. There are cobwebs everywhere, but you wouldn't know it. It's so dark down here. You reach for the switch when, ow, prick myself on something. The pain's not too bad, so you go ahead and switch the breaker. The lights flip on, and that's when you see her. A little black spider hanging in a web right where you pricked your finger. You start to shrug it off, probably a harmless little thing, but you look closer. Uh Uh-oh, that infamous bright red hourglass-shaped spot. It's a black widow, and she must have bitten you. One thought comes to mind. This isn't good. (laughs) The Black Widow is one of the most venomous spiders in the world, poisoned 15 times more potent than a rattlesnake. They won't touch you if you don't touch them. That's why they prefer quiet, undisturbed areas like attics and sheds. But if they feel threatened, or worse, she's got eggs to protect, this normally shy eight-legged introvert will come for you. That's when you see the smooth white ball hanging nearby her web, an egg sac. Yep, you had this coming. The moment your hand entered her do-not-cross line, her motherly instinct took over. She sunk her pincer-like jaws into your skin, and from those jaws protrude two tiny fangs, no longer than a grain of sand. Zoom in closer, and you see they're hollow. If you could follow this itty-bitty tunnel, it would take you to the spider's venom gland. In female black widows, it's pretty large for a small enough spider. If not for the babies, she probably would have just scurried away from you in fear. And if she did bite, she wouldn't waste her precious poison on you, human. It's better left for her next meal. She'd rather just scare you away with what's called a dry bite without venom. But no, this black widow was protecting her precious eggs. So she sinks her fangs into you like two needles, and the venom comes rushing from the gland. Two small red dots remain at the bite site, It's not very painful, but this is only the beginning. Within the first 15 minutes, your arm starts to cramp. You see, spider venom is a special neurotoxin, a protein that gets in the nervous system through the blood. It spreads in the body from the tiny capillaries near the surface of your skin and deeper from there. The toxin grabs onto the protein receptors of our nervous system. Our immune system can't prevent this because venom proteins have very tenacious and strong grips. But your body tries to fight. The bite begins to swell and turn red. It's a sign your immune system is rushing blood full of infection-fighting white cells to the site. Too bad it won't be enough. In 30 minutes, this poisonous protein has attracted loads of calcium to your nerve receptors. The result? Your body starts pumping out hormones that contract your muscle tissues, dilate your vessels, and slow your heart rate. Within one hour, your nervous system is going crazy. The toxic protein spreads from the site on your finger, now extremely painful and burning, up your arm, into your shoulder, down your back and chest, further to your stomach, onward down the legs. You're getting severe spasms and cramps all over. It's hard for you to walk. Three hours later, the venom has made it to all parts of your body. Your muscles are rigid, like you have a full-body charley horse. Your abs are so tight, it feels like you have a hard plate under your skin. You try to move, but your legs don't work. Paralysis sets in. Over the next few hours, your condition gets worse. You're now fevered, as the immune system kicks up the temperature to burn the poisonous protein. Sweat is released to cool the body down. Your skin becomes clammy. The neurotoxin reaches your respiratory system and heart. You have trouble breathing, and your heart rate is way down by now. You feel sick to your stomach. Just when you've accepted your fate, the poisonous effects finally start to wear off 12 hours after the bite. The Black Widow's neurotoxin is losing its power. Your body is gaining the upper hand. The receptors of the nervous system are freed from the venom's protein the pain decreases. It gets easier to breathe. Your muscles have finally started to relax. 
After two to three days, the bite symptoms will completely disappear. You are a lucky one. Your own body managed to come back from the brink. For many people, their immunity isn't strong or developed enough to take the attack on its own. They need medical help and an anti-venom to get rid of the neurotoxin. All that from a tiny little dime-sized spider. But it could have gone a completely different and no less pleasant route. Say it had been a brown recluse. Like with the widow, the initial bite isn't very painful. Some people don't even know they've been bitten. But as soon as it sank its fangs into you, its venom starts to do its dirty but silent work. Within 3-8 to eight hours, you get redness and swelling at the side. Yep, there goes your body sending its natural healer, white blood cells. It's starting to burn, and the pain intensifies. The red patch will grow around the bite. When the fangs entered, you might develop a blister within the next few days. For healthy people, the decline stops after 3-5 to five days, then you start feeling better. For others, the wound continues to grow and worsen. This is when you need to let a doctor know. With a brown recluse, the toxin is absorbed into the blood vessels and destroys their walls. When the spider has injected a lot of venom, or your immune system can't cope on its own, it can actually cause tissues to lose blood supply and oxygen. And that's what gives them life. It usually takes three weeks for a brown recluse wound to heal. In the worst cases, it can take two to three months. When the wandering spider bites you, its toxin can cause heavy salivation and a very erratic heart rate. It's often called a banana spider because it likes to hang out on banana leaves. This notorious little monster even ran one UK family right out of their home. They brought some bananas at the store, and the bundle ended up hiding a wandering spider's egg sac. The sack opened when the family came home, and the whole house was crawling with baby spiders. At least this one will give you a warning before it bites. It raises its front legs in a defensive mode. If you see this stance, you better run. A bite from a wolf spider isn't too serious for humans. If you're an insect, though, bad news. For people, the sight will be red, swollen, and itchy, like with bug bites or bee stings. And you definitely know when you've been bitten by these powerful fangs. The wolf spider doesn't weave a web. It hunts its prey by stalking and pouncing on it. This arachnid's speed and look are scarier than its bite. For non-venomous spiders that wait for their lunch to fly into a sticky, webby trap, they get right into action. They quickly run up to the prey and start spinning it in 460 feet of silk, enough to stretch across two Boeing 747s. These orb weavers can turn their lunch 28,000 times while trapping it in this cocoon. And if all of that has your arachnophobia meter going off the scale, just be glad you weren't around 400 million years ago. There weren't any dinosaurs yet, but there were spiders. Big ones. Megarachning was over a foot long with a leg span of almost two feet, about the length of your arm. Okay, the scientists who discovered it fossils misidentified the great spider. The creature was actually a eurypterid, something like a giant marine scorpion. Hey, close enough. I'm out of here.